Good afternoon, everyone. This is Joanna Drake. I'm the Deputy Director General of DG Environment. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll pass the floor also to the Director General of the Joint Research Center, the JRC. This is the first ever virtual Green Week. As you know, it should have happened last year, last June already. But uh, it's putting us to the test and we have to rise up to the challenge. And hence, everything is done virtually. We are even more happy today to launch the Knowledge Centre for Biodiversity during Green Week. But before I go a little bit into substance, let me just inform all participants that questions can be asked during the session by using the chat. You've got the chat on the top right hand corner of the screen, but the questions will be answered in the second part of the session where there is ample time for discussion. So a little bit on substance. Of course, you will recall that a main part of the Green Deal is the EU biodiversity strategy. And for 2030, it has proposed for the first time ever very ambitious targets and commitments. These are necessary in order to uh, bring back the level and the status of biodiversity to, to what it was many years ago, as it, was, it has been very much degraded. So we need to go through transformative change and we need to go into action very quickly. So we call upon the Knowledge Centre for Biodiversity, also announced in the strategy, to facilitate the regular progress assessment and to contribute to set out corrective action if necessary. As they always say, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. And in this spirit, I would like now to pass the floor for a few words also from Director General Stephen Quest, Director General of Joint Research Centre, who is our partner, not in crime, but in biodiversity restoration. The floor is yours, Stephen. Thank you very much, Joanna. And uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be with you all today at this, uh, this important event. Um, the, the first global assessment on biodiversity and ecosystem services, which was released last year, points to an unprecedented and an accelerating decline. And, and it warns us that it's human activity which is responsible for a significant alteration of land and marine environments, driving over a million species to extinction. Now, despite the very significant uh, progress we've made in environmental legislation in the European Union, there, there remain quite large gaps in the legal protection of ecosystems, both on land, where 76% uh, of terrestrial ecosystems, including forests, agri-ecosystems and urban ecosystems, remain excluded from legal designation under the, the Birds and the Habitats Directive. So we need collectively to make more efforts to bend the curve of biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation and to put ecosystems on a path to recovery. And that's where the EU biodiversity strategy to 2030 comes in. It sets ambitious goals in this regard and its implementation needs to be underpinned by robust evidence. And this is why it calls for the creation of a knowledge center for biodiversity, a one-stop shop for science-based evidence needed to protect natural ecosystems. Now, in recent years, the Joint Research Center has stepped up its efforts on knowledge management. There's a growing amount of knowledge and expertise from different domains and sources. Yet this often still remains specialized and, and fragmented as well. This is why we set up knowledge centers in areas where there is a clear policy demand and where the Joint Research Center can offer a critical mass of knowledge. These centers are virtual entities, a bit like today's event, uh, that bring together experts and knowledge both inside and outside the commission so that we can inform policymakers in a transparent, in a tailored and in a concise manner about the latest scientific evidence. And the Knowledge Centre on Biodiversity will be co-chaired by the Joint Research Centre and the DG for Environment. And work will take place in a variety of other services uh, across the Commission, the European Environment Agency, uh, and UNEP as well for the global dimension. And it'll have three main functions, to track and assess progress made by the European Union and its partners in relation to the implementation of biodiversity related instruments, to foster cooperation and partnership, including between climate and biodiversity scientists, and thirdly, to underpin policy development. 
and you can certainly be assured that the Joint Research Center will build on its expertise in many fields related to biodiversity to support the implementation of many of the commitments made in the biodiversity strategy. So thank you very much and back over to you, Joanna. Stephen, for that and for that reassuring uh, co co collaboration and coordination with you and your team. Um, now it's time to have a, a message from our commissioner, Commissioner uh, Virginia Sinkevichus. Um, he's the Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fisheries. And we have a video recorded speech by him. So. Good afternoon, everybody. A warm thank you to Joanna and Steve for steering the process in my absence. Thank you to everyone participating in the launch of this Knowledge Center. I remember the first time I heard about the Knowledge Center in the early drafts of the Biodiversity Strategy. So I am very excited to see one of its important deliverables come into being. With every month that passes, we understand better the challenges ahead. Yesterday, we saw the release of the 2020 State of Nature report. Today, we have the first EU-wide ecosystem assessment. They paint a dark picture. Europe's nature, its ecosystems and the service they deliver are deeply in crisis. They confirm the findings of the most recent UN Global Biodiversity Outlook report. Our footprint on nature is far too big. And if we fail to address that impact, there will be bigger crises ahead. It's a challenge for us, for our generation, for today. Time is not in our side. There are tipping points ahead. And if we wait too long, there will be no coming back. Scientists from all over the world are calling for a transformative change in the way we produce, consume and live. We know it can be done. Citizens want it to be done. Every day, new grassroots initiatives demonstrate solutions with the changes we need. And policymakers are answering the call. Our European Green Deal provides the integrated agenda we need, a coherent approach that brings multiple wins. It's all about systemic thinking, a plan to tackle climate change, biodiversity loss, unsustainable resource use and pollution, all at the same time, with a set of initiatives that make each other stronger while bringing growth and jobs. We have a new climate law to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050, a circular economy action plan, also at the heart of the EU recovery plan, a new strategy for farming and food, and a chemical strategy for sustainability. All these initiatives are now in place, completing our new strategy for biodiversity that puts forward an ambitious agenda with concrete commitments. We want at least 30% of all land and sea areas protected, well managed and well connected, with strict protections for one third of that. We are launching a major ecosystem restoration wave and a new effort to use natural resources in a more sustainable way across all sectors of the economy. That means making forestry, agriculture, fisheries, transport, energy and trade sustainable and bringing biodiversity back in areas where it has disappeared. And we are setting up a, a better system for governance underpinned by reliable monitoring and data. Success will depend on many things, but one thing will be essential, and that is generating knowledge and sharing it widely. We also need to be able to monitor progress and communicating about the speed of implementation, and that's what today is all about. My hope is that this Knowledge Center will be able to generate resources and provide easy access to a clear set of indicators that will give us a compass as policymakers for taking our actions ahead. Disinformation and indicators will be crucial to assess progress, set out corrective action if needed. The scoreboard should be as transparent as possible, making all of us accountable. The EU, the member states, business, stakeholders and civil society. And we can use this mechanism in many other ways. It can help plot the actions we need for the European Green Deal the Resilience and Recovery Plans, and the SDGs. It can feed into the Environmental Implementation Review and contribute to the European semester. And it can serve 
as an inspiration for a wider global monitoring framework for the post-2020 biodiversity policy. We will agree in Kunming. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't solve the biodiversity crisis by acting alone. But collective, intelligence can deliver the changes we need. So long live to the Knowledge Center. Let's use it to the full. And congratulations once again to everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for that inspiring message. And it's it's now my great pleasure uh, to welcome uh, my own Commissioner to this uh, session, Commissioner Maria Gabrielle, the Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and the Youth, who's going now to share with us her opening remarks. Uh, Commissioner, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for, for me to be together with you today to announce the launch of this Knowledge Center for Biodiversity. I would like to start by thanking Commissioner Sinkevitio for the excellent cooperation that we have, dear Virginius. It's, it's a pleasure to work together with you. And I would like to highlight the excellent work done by Joint Research Center and DG Envy for this project, because by cooperating together, we already show how important it is to coordinate, to have knowledge shared, to have evidence-based policy, and that's an excellent symbol. So thank you very much to our respective teams. That's a great example how by working together we can achieve better results. Now I would like to start, but, but again, reminding that this center was already announced in our European Biodiversity Strategy to 2030, which is a key element of the European Green Deal. And I'm convinced that this will be an important step in our joint efforts to halt and reverse biodiversity loss and having the European Union lead by example the very much needed global efforts. Yes, there is several recent reports. Stephen, you mentioned the first global assessment released in May 2019. I very much welcome the European ecosystem assessment. But what is clear now is that all these reports highlight the urgency to take actions before a large part of our biodiversity, which is so important for our health, well-being, our economies and the resilience of our societies is lost. And the urgency of the current situation and the inherently complex and multidimensional aspects of biodiversity conservation require new ways of working. Enhanced scientific support to European policy has a crucial role to play. And here I would like to say that the new knowledge center uh, is greatly it's, it's a great example of how you can help us to streamline the la latest knowledge about biodiversity into the European policies, to strengthen policy coherence, and will be key for monitoring of the implementation of the strategy. I welcome the new virtual entity, bringing together experts and knowledge from different locations inside and outside of the European Commission, and that will work closely with the European Environment Agency. We know that it will support the implementation of the strategy in Europe, but also engage with our international partners to tackle as well the global dimension and help reduce our ecological footprint outside European borders. Stephen, you already mentioned that, but I very much welcome the three strands on which the center will initially, initially work. It's so important that first, uh, we have the knowledge center in order to track and assess progress by the EU and its partners, including in relations to implementation of biodiversity related international instruments. Second, to foster cooperation and partnership, including between climate and biodiversity scientists. And thirdly, of course, to underpin policy development. That's why now what is important is to, he, to see how, thanks to the Knowledge Center, we can translate fast-growing amounts of data generating by new technologies into actionable information needed for effective decision-making. And there will be new lessons drawn about the necessary transformative changes requiring increased policy coherence across all economic sectors, as well as the engagement of citizens and businesses. And to be successful, the European biodiversity strategy will require the help from everyone, 
the Knowledge Center will contribute with policy evidence for the actions already foreseen in Cluster 6 in Horizon Europe program. Over 100 research and innovation actions under this cluster will support the objective of halting biodiversity decline and restoring ecosystems, and the center can provide valuable policy evidence. The Knowledge Center will be also able to provide valuable input and foster co-creation with European citizens during the implementation of our European missions, the new, the new element on the Horizon Europe program, and missions are related to climate change as well as healthy soil and foods. And through fostering cooperation and partnerships, including between climate and biodiversity scientists, as I already said it, the center will enable the exchange of knowledge and free circulation of researchers within the revitalized European research area. The Knowledge Center for Biodiversity will act also as one-stop shop to support European policy and the European Green Deal in particular. In addition, to the center that allowed launching today, the European Biodiversity Strategy for 2030 will count on Horizon Europe program. You know that we already, with Horizon 2020, we strongly supported the actions under, under, the, under this domain that will be the same during the next program. And on top of that, I would like to highlight that the European Commission launched last month a specific call focusing on biodiversity and ecosystem restoration as part of the 1 billion euro Green Deal call. Research and innovation will be key to address knowledge gaps and provide solutions to the biodiversity challenge we are facing. And these efforts will also require a closer interface between policymakers and NGOs, businesses and the public in general. Last but not least, the center will also play an important role on fostering coordination and collaboration between the European Environment Agency and the United Nations Environment Programme for strengthening the European contribution to global knowledge on biodiversity loss, including the scientific and technical support to the Convention on Biological Diversity. I would like to conclude by saying that I wish you fruitful discussions in the coming session and I would like to encourage warmly the collaborative effort that will take place in the next months and years. Protecting our environment and our biodiversity is protecting ourselves. Protecting our planet ecosystems is protecting our societies in context of sustainability. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Commissioner Gabriel. Um, for that uh, very, very enthusiastic and encouraging um, support um, uh, and collaboration also with us on this uh, very uh, important role um, uh, that uh, your services will also be playing. Um, I'd no now like to pass on the floor to uh, Giovanni De Santi, who is the Director for Sustainable Resources in JRC. And Giovanni will be showing us a video on the Knowledge Center for Biodiversity, and also to, after him, Grégoire Dubois, who is the project leader for scientific research in JRC. And Grégoire will give us a presentation. So, the floor is yours, Giovanni. Thank you, Joanna, and thank you, Stephen. First of all, for your presence today with us, but also for the great support you gave us during the past months uh, to properly launch this initiative commonly driven by GSC and the environment. Good afternoon, Commissioner Gabriel, and thank you, of course, for your presence, for your participation. We are all honored very much that you wanted to share with us these great moments, you know, which rewards very much, I must admit, my colleagues of GSC and the ones of, of the environment, that they did have to work hardly to make this knowledge center to become a reality. So thank you very much, all of you. And good afternoon, of course, to all participants. And welcome also from my side to this official launch of the European Commission Knowledge Center on Biodiversity. Next. So I, I think that you see from this slide immediately you now that biodiversity is considering one of the pillars of the Green Deal. Because, again, as you see, biodiversity is mentioned 
in the Green Deal. So the preservation of of uh, and protecting, restoring ecosystem biodiversity is important. Green Deal, as you know, is my view the, a revolutionary way for Europe to foster growth, innovation, social prosperity, industrial competitiveness, putting preservation of environment the core this process. So green is considered now an engine, a, a boost for growth and prosperity. is no more considered as it was in the past, a kind of barrier or impediment. So in my view, Green Deal means also a radical change in mentality and social attitude. And as you do know, again, the, the biodiversity is one of the pillars of the Green Deal. So next slide, please. You see that biodiversity as such is therefore a very clear example of transversal and cross-cutting issues, whereby we have, as many other cases you see, has proposed a, a knowledge center. Why the knowledge center? Because again, you see that biodiversity has multi-dimensional aspect. So it's multi-environment because it does affect soil, water, forest, marine environment. It's multiple scale, both spatial and temporal dimension because it goes from local urban areas to global tropical forest. And finally, in multiple policies, because you see that from the picture that biodiversity is affecting many policies, almost also agriculture, fisheries, environment, health, energy, climate, justice, trade. And this hit it is, is also impacted by all policies. So it's a bilateral continuous exchange a mutual impact of biodiversity on policy and policy on biodiversity. So this is a real typical example of transversal cross-cutting issues that affect all society, all uh, policies and all implementation of all measures you know, for tackling the, 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 the challenge ahead. So for this type of cross-cutting central uh, issues, GC is proposing no, the knowledge centers. The knowledge center, because this uh, transversal issue, which are very much based on science, on knowledge, they do need science to be, to be put at the center. So we do need the, a center of gravity, a forum, next slide please, a forum whereby we do have possibility to exchange views, to, co to, co to arrive to consented analysis to consented and, and, and independent uh, support to the policy makers. So we do need this kind of knowledge centers, again, to support the evidence-based uh, policy, but also to go across. So to make sure that all policy makers, from agri to environment, to fisheries, to whoever, they, they do get the same starting points, so the same evidence, and they do not come to co contradictory conclusions. So this is again a typical example where the GSC and science in general can really put at the center, can be the glue for, for, for fostering better and better and more complementary policies you know, in, the, in the Commission, but also in the member states. So this is why we thought from the very beginning, more than a year ago, to propose with our colleagues in the environment, you know, this knowledge center for biodiversity. Now, if I do go ahead, you know, we, the, the, in particular, the next slide, please, the biodiversity knowledge center, therefore, has three main pillars. One, as it is also mentioned in the biodiversity strategy to 2030. So the first one is just to track and assess progress of the biodiversity strategy. So it will be very important that we develop proper indicators to understand how much the biodiversity strategy will be implemented, to which extent is successful and effective, and where we lack behind the schedule time. So we do need maybe to improve or to boost better some, some measures. So important to get acquainted about the real implementation of the strategy. Second, as I said before, and it was already mentioned very clearly by the two previous speakers, so the Commission Sinkovicius and the Commission Gabriel, we need to underpin the policy development and policy coherence because policy interlinkages is one of the most difficult aspects because all societal aspects are linked to each other, so also the policy in the future will be more and more linked to each other, and therefore they do need this kind of consented central 
and and it's a independent source of, of evidence, source of data, source of analysis. You know? And finally, foster cooperation, partnership with key international organizations and strength of coordination. Because biodiversity is not a matter, is not an issue for one part of Europe, for one part of society. It's everywhere an issue with different aspects, but still an issue in Europe is still an issue worldwide. So we do need to understand how to put remediation, how to to foster possible future better uh, restoring of ecosystem services and, and biodiversity with solutions that are applicable at, in, at Europe wide, but also worldwide. So this is why we need the contribution from all organizations worldwide and in particular European organizations. So next slide, please. So this is why from the very beginning, when we had the very first conception of this knowledge center, so this knowledge service that should be at the service of the different policy, A to B to C to D, you know, these are just connecting, coordinating. So it will be very important. You can imagine if you do have internal discussion to coordinate different efforts, to exchange fundings, to exchange data, to provide support to these different, uh, different initiatives. So this will under, be underpinned by research and innovation because it's not just to collect data, to make evidence and to provide final report, but also to foster and to provide guidelines for research and innovation, you know, and in that respect is very important, the link to Horizon Europe, as Commissioner Gabriel mentioned already, so to also look forward with for a foresight dimension, you know, and this has to be applied in two dimensions, as I said before, European-wide and global-wide. So that's why, and I will explain now even in more detail, we will get a company and we will get collaboration and complementarity with many organizations from the European Environment Agency. And in a, in a few moments also, Hans will, will talk to us and will give us his clear, great input, especially coming from the Topical Center, the EA, but I will mention now in, in particular, and also for global, for United Nations organizations. So next slide, please. Again, when we talk about knowledge service, as I said before, is first of all, one, one stop shop. So it's so complex, it's so diversified, the, it's so articulated the biodiversity knowledge that we need to have one entry point. The entry point for whoever wants to get a knowledge and to become a knowledge and to get better information about the latest progress within the commission, within the scientific community regarding bio. Uh, diversity. So this is one important aspect. So one entry point to coordinate the different knowledge, you know, to develop working groups, because we will need to develop real, real working groups, so real output, real deliverables. So we need to address key policy demands with reports, with, with analysis. So there will be the need for different, even if interlinked, working groups led by key authors. Then we will need to provide in the end key reports for the scientific, uh, with putting scientific evidence at the, at the basis for any kind of decision at all level, European, national or local level. We will need to identify, as I said before, interlinkage among policies. As you see, this is the classical uh, map of interlinkage for SDGs. So whenever you do calculate, you do consider different targets or the SDG, how many interlinkage among different policies you should be aware of. And finally, to support collaboration. So the, this forum, this hub of scientists that they should develop and they should deliver key important reports on very precise uh, items that they should be discussed together and put forward to many decision makers. On the other side, however, next slide please. We also want to be as a, a science service. So we need also to continue to develop also high level scientific literature report. So including foresight and innovation. So it's very important that we look forward, we anticipate a, a possible threats or possible challenges that are already now visible the horizon that will become uh, reality in the near future. So here like the health worm 
becomes butterfly. Also, we need to look at forward and to understand in advance, you know, how a possible challenge again or threat, societal threat might might hit our policy agenda. So it's very important this kind of scientific forward looking and not just policy service, you know. And finally, to also to identify possible knowledge gap and to develop their four reports and, and knowledge in where we don't feel yet comfortable. So to conclude again, we do have, as I said, two important dimensions, this knowledge set. As I said, the European dimension, which is again, we need to look at the forthcoming uh, legislation ready on the, on, the, on the agenda of the European Commission. We need to collaborate a lot with EAA because we want to get profit for all the data streaming from member states to the European Commission, to the European Union, from EAA and the, and the topical centers, especially the complementarity with the biodiversity information system, so the BISA, which is under the leadership of EAA, so is an information system which should be considered the reference the, uh, source of data, of analysis of information, whereby the scientists uh, participate in the different working groups of the knowledge center will get profit from. And finally, we will also Im improve the monitoring, in including the Copernicus. So this is very important because you know that all, all policies from agriculture to biodiversity to, to ocean and fisheries to, to marine land water. I think that they do need desperately to modernize, to digitalize their policies, getting probably for the new huge amount of data now available from Copernicus, in particular for Sentinel data. So the, 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 the possibility now to, to use this modern near real time investigation is absolutely fundamental, is a game changer for the possible future development of the different policies. And in that respect, again, and again, this knowledge center will get profit from these new tools. And, and again, for the same is when we go to the global dimension, because the global dimension is again another absolutely indispensable aspect of what we will do. As I said, biodiversity is not just an European issue, it's a worldwide issue. Solution valid for Europe are definitely very much connected to the rest of the world. So we need to work in close collaboration with the Convention of Biological Diversity, so CBD, and also with the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem System Service, so the IPBES, and there will permanent component of this knowledge center. So again, they, they are more than invited to participate, to share with us, and we will listen also soon. Also, they are they are common, their contribution. Again, so to support, again, international activity affecting biodiversity, to understand possibility for common uh, solutions, and to make Europe, again, as a part of the worldwide solution. This is very important because we need to consider trade. We need to consider also the wildlife crime, which is international considered, climate change. These are by far or, or the influence of biodiversity into Africa, because you know that we also want to have a kind of dimension out of the green deal, and again, biodiversity would be very important. So to conclude again, I want simply to show the, the, the slide, which is again, next slide please. I want just to simply to say that we have ahead of us a lot, a lot of concrete issue concrete targets you know whereby we need to immediately deliver we need to set up working groups to select the most urgent issues but you see that just as a as a tentative list of forthcoming initiative and legislation pieces of legislation for the european agenda so you have the new forest strategy the soil biodiversity freshwater marine agriculture the revision of air quality zero pollution fishery so you can go along for for many many minutes to list all the new as i said policy strategies that do need desperately to get support in a much more integrated way whereby the socio economic and environmental aspects are considered by all these aspects and this is just looking at the and including the horizon europe which was again mentioned by commissioner gabriel which is again our brother on the other side so it's very important whatever we do foster for research innovation is very much supported RTD, but RTD is very much 
included in this knowledge center from the very beginning, and we have received many, many important contributions you know, for the setting up this, this new idea. And globally, again, as I said before, we need to collaborate on global monitoring, getting profit from the availability of Copernicus, global assessment, and support to the different conventions. And without forgetting the citizen engagement. So this is a complex, a complex concept of the knowledge center. I'm sure it will work with a fair participation contribution for all the participants. And the, the program that we have ahead of us, so the very last slide, is that we want to have the kickoff meeting of this knowledge center. So we start to really work in the next three months. So we will have a next first kickoff meeting, whereby we will identify working groups that we'll start immediately to work with. So if I do think, for example, of agroecology or trade and footprint, transformative change, health, these are all topics that they do need and they do deserve to be immediately considered as possible topic for the, uh, for the various working groups. So I expect to convey together with Umberto, Delgado Rosa, as soon as possible, uh, the very first kickoff meeting of the knowledge center, identify working groups led by key scientists, wherever they come from, you know, and then to start working, to deliver in about 12 months or 16 months from now, the first important reports that are very much important for, again, making progress on the policy agenda. So we will have this very first kickoff meeting. We will, as I said, map the interlinkage because it's easy and qualitatively easy to say that biodiversity is spread everywhere in part and is impacted by our policy. But then you need to quantify. You need to tell me to each extent it does impact agriculture. Agriculture is in fact by, by biodiversity and vice versa. And, and, and the same for, for, for ocean or, or marine water or land water. So I think that this is important to identify the impact, the quantitatively impact and interlinkage among biodiversity and the different policies. And therefore the to issue, as I said before, the first report. So I'll stop here by thanking again very much the, the two commissioners, the two DGs, the colleagues and the audience, because we are just at the start of a long, long way to go. Within a, in a very demanding challenge, however, stimulating a target to provide this kind of complex, however, robust, independent science in support of this very complex, uh, delicate, sensitive, however, necessary new strategy, which contribute to the Green Deal. So if you do agree, I would like to hand over now to Grégoire Dubois, who is the master from JC side of this knowledge center, and I would like him to give you some idea of food, really concrete uh, food or what knowledge center should we be will be dealing with. Thank you very much, and Gregoire, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Germany. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Well, clearly, this is a, a great honor for me to have been appointed uh, by Giovanni to manage this new knowledge center but uh, also quite uh, uh, what an extraordinary challenge. Um, so it's, it's going to be a one-stop shop for biodiversity, but it's also an open door for everyone who really wants to help us in implementing this strategy. So the working groups will be key uh, to implementing uh, the, the, the biodiversity strategy. It's about the effectiveness of these working groups to work together that will really see uh, a change in the way we work. The idea is to adopt something that is commonly used in, uh, in, in environmental uh, uh, research is a framework that is organized around pressure, state and response. We are speaking about knowledge, but knowledge about what? It's not only about knowledge about spacious, we are speaking about knowledge of ecosystems, we are speaking about knowledge of uh, our footprint, about the industrial processes that are transferring, transforming our world. So. The pressures are clearly uh, the main drivers uh, of environment, they transform environments, and the stakeholders, the key actors there, are clearly the citizens, but also the industry. Everyone is actually directly or indirectly transforming our world. And the climate change is a fantastic, impressive uh, uh, expression of this uh, world transforming dramatically, as all these reports have uh, shown lately. 
We need to bring in the knowledge regarding the state of environments. Uh, all these reports are very good at depicting the dramatic situation regarding ecosystems and biodiversity. But we also need to bring in information about the knowledge regarding the possible responses. The responses are coming not only from the policymakers, it's also through education. How can we bring in uh, the kids again in contact with nature? How can we connect again with nature in a world that is more and more urbanized and people living more and more into cities? It's about a response through research and funding that can really transform and do, does transform the, the, the way we live. Uh, circular economy will rely heavily on innovation. It's also about uh, uh, funding, of course. Uh, we can transform also positively when we're speaking about pressures. Uh, we are also sometimes speaking about possible drivers of changes. We know we can restore ecosystems. We have programs that do help conserve species, like the LIFE program of the DG environment. So. These three types of knowledge need to be brought together and they need to be brought in coherently together. So if you look over the last uh, uh, 10 years, I would say, I'm trying to control my slides, here we go. So if we look back actually at the research that has happened over the last 10 years, an amazing progress has been made regarding uh, the production of global products derived from Earth observation. Uh, and this uh, largely thanks to the European Space Programme, Copernicus, which allows us uh, to monitor what is happening everywhere in near real time. We have new maps of uh, human settlements, of build up areas. We can really track urbanizations inside and outside conservation areas. We have maps about land productivity. We have information about the evolution of surface water, even going back uh, 30 years back. We can really understand uh, our world more, than, uh, more effectively than ever. We have information about forests. We can monitor deforestation again in near real time. And this information is really inaccessible to everyone. So we are not anymore in a situation where we can say, well, we didn't know. We have now a wealth of information that allows us to understand what is happening. Where we need to do more is clearly to understand why is it happening and how can we contrast this. So there are huge uncertainties still regarding our knowledge about biodiversity. Biodiversity is very complex. It's about the interactions of species. A single species can eradicate a complete uh, system if it disappears. It's about understanding, identifying the species. We have uh, in a very famous uh, and very largely used database from the GBIF more than 1 billion records of uh, occurrences over the last, uh, uh, over the last uh, 20 years. But these changes, uh, these uh, observations actually a drop in an ocean. Uh, if we think that we have basically uh, an average of uh, two or two observations per square kilometers, it's nothing over 20 years. So clearly we need to do more. And most importantly, we need to connect more with social and economic sciences. They are the ones that help us to understand why these changes are happening, what will be the consequences when we will start with these transformative changes that are absolutely urgent. So there are huge challenges ahead in terms of science. This morning, we had actually a good example of, of a knowledge project, uh, this uh, new report regarding the EU ecosystem assessment, a collaboration between the Joint Research Center, the European Environmental Agency and the DG Environment. It sets a baseline to help us to track the progress for the 2030 biodiversity policy and strategy. So this is an example of uh, one of the key products that will be used that uh, can be delivered, but we need to do more than that. Uh, generating this product is actually quite expensive when we think about uh, the effort to collect the data, to harmonize them, to aggregate them, process them, make them available to everyone. We have an example at the GSC, which is the GSC's the Digital Observatory for Protected Areas. So it's a complex system that relies not only on GSC produced data, but also data managed and shared by the partners. Uh, we will have another example with the biodiversity information systems for Europe. So there are things that actually have not been readdressed that will be constantly in the background, which is basically more inter interoperability between systems, uh, more coordination to delineate, to define what are the indicators to be uh, to be used. Uh, to be, uh, we need to have uh, more collaboration with uh, the socioeconomic societies to understand really how to understand the processes that are driving all these changes. 
we need to make better, uh, we need to do more, and uh, certainly uh, I'm very much looking forward to work with uh, all these possible stakeholders and hopefully we'll have one day all this complexity, everybody flying together without any kind of friction and moving together, the way birds are sometimes mirroring together uh, in this way. So let's go back to work and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Gregoire and Giovanni, for those uh, presentations. Uh, and uh, it's my great pleasure now to hand the floor over to Hans Proenix, the Executive Director of the European Environment Agency, who's going to give us uh, the European dimension of the Knowledge Centre. So, Hans, over to you, please. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you to the colleagues for uh, having us in this session. And indeed, I think it has been mentioned by the colleagues from the JRC that uh, the contribution of the European Environment Agency is mainly embedded in the data, the information, the evidence that is uh, delivered by member states uh, under the European legislation and policy in which we bring together with other scientific information and Copernicus data in the biodiversity information system for Europe. What is important is that this builds on more than two decades of uh, handling this data from monitoring and reporting, data management, analysis and assessments, linking this to policymakers, and we do this in a strong network with the member states and the member countries of the EEA, the scientific community, and also the European Topic Center for Biodiversity. Uh, we think this is our key contribution to the Knowledge Center. We are launching today the new version of uh, BICE, and I would say it's new and improved. It offers more features, uh, and I will try to walk you through that part of the knowledge base. The Knowledge uh, Center is really uh, organized by themes, and we help those who have a strong interest to discover the concept of biodiversity, the notion of biodiversity. We provide uh, the tracking of progress in protecting nature, which is, of course, closely linked to the nature directives and European and national policies. We explore the broad variety of uh, ecosystems in Europe, understand protected areas, which is absolutely a pinnacle of protecting biodiversity in Europe, the link with policy measures and whether they work or not and tracking their progress, the green infrastructure debate, which I think is becoming more and more important if we look at the link with the future economy. Then we have an access point to the data to which was referred already, and we know that scientists have a big interest in that from our uh, information on who downloads what. And of course, the challenges to biodiversity, and that includes linkages to agriculture, climate change, and all the things that have been mentioned before. We have a number of thematic uh, pages, and I would like to highlight the page that links to the MAS project, the mapping and assessing of uh, ecosystems and their services, which was launched earlier today, and which is an absolute uh, brilliant piece of work that has been delivered with the colleagues of the JRC, with DG Environment, and a broad range of other partners in Europe, including the member states. So this, this is an important gateway to information that, that is uh, expanding into ecosystem status, into the use of ecosystems, the services, all the underpinning data, and I encourage everybody to look into it. We also have country profiles where we explore uh, at the country level based on the most recent data and information issues like protected areas with all the information on that, protected species, uh, conservation status of habitats, uh, and a bunch of other information, and we link it to the policy context. So you can find for whatever country you are from in Europe the latest data that is quality checked and assured by the colleagues in uh, the topic center and by the colleagues in the agency. What is important is that uh, we make the explicit link 
with the use of data and the use of data to track policy performance. So if you look at a country like Ireland, you will be able to find uh, the, the Irish equivalent of the mass project and all the developments in Ireland. Uh, we look at green infrastructure in Ireland uh, at the national level and at the governance of that, the biodiversity strategy and how that dovetails with European uh, and global objectives. And of course, also uh, the, the reporting that Ireland would do to the CBD and to European policy. So it's really a gateway into national level information as well. What I think is important to say that all that we produce is often based on what we call our super database, UNIS. Um, so we are uh, responsible for uh, all the, the new data, updating it, making sure that it speaks to each other, it is coherent. And indeed, as Giovanni mentioned, the data integration element in understanding biodiversity and the multiple linkages to other challenges, we think is a critical element. We also have a digital protected areas uh, report, which uh, is of course, as I said, the pinnacle of uh, protecting nature in Europe. We, we have uh, produced our state of nature report uh, and, and uh, launched that yesterday and earlier this week. Uh, we will keep updating with the latest information so that people uh, are sure that they get uh, when it's possible near real time in some cases or where it's not possible, where we are the, have the latest quality checked and assured information under the monitoring and reporting frameworks in Europe. We also do this with a connection to the global level, of course. What I'd like to also emphasize is that BICE, uh, Biodiversity Information System for Europe, is part of a family of information systems that are managed uh, with partners by the European Environment Agency. And that also includes WISE, the Water Information System for Europe, Freshwater, and WISE Marine. That also uh, links to the Climate Adapt framework. And we know that biodiversity and climate adaptation are increasingly regarded as uh, interconnected. And also mentioned by the previous speakers, the Forest Information System for Europe, FICE. So if you take that whole family together, we think it is an important gateway to information and we are ensuring more and more that the data speaks to each other and are interoperable uh, to use the technical term, but more importantly, uh, is able to support integrated policy making from uh, a perspective of the European Green Deal. When I look into the future, and this is my last uh, slide, uh, I think it's uh, a per a abundantly clear that a strong information system in support of biodiversity and that can feed indeed into a knowledge debate as was presented by Giovanni is absolutely critical. And so we think this links closely to the biodiversity strategy, which also will require innovation in how we monitor, report, assess, and create data and information on biodiversity. And we are ready to do that. It also speaks to the Convention on Biological Diversity, where we know that the COP is coming up and will set new targets and standards also for information. And indeed, we are contributing the European data at that level, as was uh, uh, asked and said also by Commissioner Gabriel. And we, of course, are working with the Copernicus as one of the entrusted services to make sure that we benefit maximally from what Copernicus can bring uh, to an area where uh, information has a very broad variety of uh, sources going from a couple hundred thousand citizen scientists going from ornithologists to volunteers of nature organizations to uh, high level scientists and also earth observation. And we need to make sure that we bring this knowledge together in a strong information system in support of high policy ambitions. In the interest of time, I will leave it at that. I know that this was only a paintbrush and fast overview of what BICE can contribute. And of course, I uh, invite you to visit the new site and uh, come with any questions to the agency that you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hans, for that. Even if it was a brush, as you said, it was a very 
good brushing, I would say, of of um, of, of how um, also the environmental agency will be collaborating in this uh, very ambitious project. I now give the floor to David Cooper. David is the deputy executive secretary of the CBD, and he will focus on uh, related international developments on biodiversity, uh, Kunming, I suppose. So, David, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Joanna. And um, let me also thank you and Stephen and Giovanni and uh, Gregoire for the continued support uh, from JRC to the to the convention. Um, I'd also like to congratulate Hans on the on the on the recently launched reports, the ecosystems assessment and the state of nature report. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have this opportunity on behalf of uh, Elizabeth Marema, the Executive Secretary of the, of the CBD, and myself and all my colleagues, uh, to join this launch of the EU Knowledge Centre for Biodiversity, part of, part of Green Week. I'd also really like to express our appreciation to the Commissioners, Commissioner Sinkovicius and Commissioner Gabriella, um, for, for their remarks. And also really to acknowledge the, the role and the importance of the EU Biodiversity Strategy 2030. Um, as the Commissioner said, leading by example is, is really important. It's certainly really important in the process as we and as the international community uh, develops the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. As you, as you know, last month we launched the Global Biodiversity Outlook and the unfortunate uh, conclusions from that report based on the analysis uh, coming from uh, the EU, from the member states, from the other uh, countries around the world, <coughs> and also from the scientific community building on the IPBES assessment and, and so on. The unfortunate reality is that we haven't achieved fully any of the Aichi targets. We've partially met uh, six of them. We are not, therefore, on the path uh, that all the nations set in 2010 um, to be living in harmony with nature. And unfortunately, I think the, the reports just mentioned, the Ecosystems Report and the State of Nature report in the EU reinforce this, this conclusion. We could also say, I think, that the, the ongoing COVID uh, pandemic, it adds to the, the sense of crisis that we have, joining the, the climate crisis, the, the, the risk of the, the sixth mass extinction. And clearly, as we set path on the framework and the implementation of the framework for the next 10 years, we can't afford to be saying the same thing in, in 10 years time. By then it will be too late to change the path of the planet to one of sustainability. The IPBES Global Assessment, uh, other assessments, uh, the Global Biodiversity Outlook, they've all shown that it is possible to bend the curve of, of biodiversity loss, but that we would need transformational change. It's not going to be easy and as the commissioner said this will need action across all of the sectors and it will need us to work all together as a global community we are now have our sites on cop 15 now uh, postponed unfortunately to next year but uh, uh, cop 15 in kunming china where we expect to adopt the post 2020 global biodiversity framework and what does this framework have to do? It has to facilitate the, the transformational change, those difficult changes. It has to make those changes that are perhaps otherwise difficult to achieve. It may, has to make them possible. It has to facilitate those, those changes. And this means the framework certainly needs to have um, the right goals, the right targets um, with the level of scope and ambition needed to achieve that overarching vision of living in harmony with nature. But it means that then they have to guide and target our actions and investment 
and ensure that the actions that we take will produce the results that are needed. And central to that is going to be to keep watch on the commitments made, to keep watch on the progress made, and to make sure that we're on, on the right track. Um, we need to be able to understand what it is happening, what actions have been taken, what actions are successful, and where there are gaps. And this is why in the discussions in preparing for the post-2020 framework, the parties have put in a lot of emphasis on monitoring and review. And it improved data and science is essential for this. And this is why we really welcome this establishment of the Knowledge Center for Biodiversity. Data and science form a foundation for better decision making. We will also need to close the gap between the scientific community and the people making decisions. How can we make sure that data and knowledge is accessible uh, and is seen as legitimate for those making, making decisions? Certainly, the, the recent developments by the EU and the EEA uh, will help in this. The, the Copernicus satellite, the provision of near real-time uh, data, but also important, the things that Gregoire was outlining in terms of the working groups to, to bring people uh, together. The Knowledge Center will provide a regional hub for data and science for monitoring and assessing progress for sharing uh, information, for sharing experiences, for visualizing this information. I'm really excited to join you today for this launch. I think it's gonna be, uh, the KCB is gonna be a really important uh, component. It's, it's perhaps an early manifestation of the promises made in the EU strategy um, to, to move ahead. Uh, to move ahead and, and support the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. I would just like to come back and highlight the urgency we have with the health crisis, with the biodiversity crisis, with the climate crisis. Actually, these are really different aspects of the same crisis. We have 10 years to act. We will need um, action by all, by, by governments, by, by, by communities, by businesses, and we'll certainly need to bring the, the data and information uh, to bear to, to help us move forward. Um, so congratulations on the establishment of this, of this center, uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity of um, contributing to this, this launch. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David, um, for that, um, uh, and also for the, um, shall we say, the realization that this is quite a sea change that will come about thanks to this Knowledge Center on Biodiversity. Um, it will bring us together, it will bring about transformational change, it will uh, offer the opportunity for us to be also co-owners. Um, of the progress towards uh, better biodiversity status. Um, the centre will support also transparency, it will support uh, capacity building, it will support stakeholder dialogue and also a participatory governance at different levels. So thank you all uh, for this uh, very solid uh, and very real collaboration um, happening right now as we speak and congratulations to all. Um, I'd like now to also give the floor to Stephen um, uh, for his concluding remarks um, and I'd like to just remind you just one housekeeping rule um, that you will have to remain connected for the second session because we shall be continuing after a short break. Stephen, floor is yours. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joanna, and, and thanks uh, to all the all the different speakers for, for, for their remarks. I think it's been a very, very interesting session and uh, looking forward already to the to the second session where we can have some some more discussion and some interaction uh, with you all. Uh, my, my my personal takeaways from the discussion so far uh, would be uh, that I, mean, I think it's very clear from what we've heard. Now is the time to act, as David was just saying. The, the the urgency is is right before us, and and this is the moment in which we have to act. Uh, that 
Uh, we need to join up the dots. I think uh, one common thread running through all the interventions was the need to draw out the interlinkages, uh, at the integration uh, of our policies, of our data and of our actions. And I think this is the, the core focus of the Knowledge Centre uh, and that we need to work together uh, and we need to collaborate uh, and that this has to be a collective effort uh, if we're to build um, a, a real partnership and be able to drive this forward. And that's certainly um, our intention. So uh, thank you all uh, to the many participants uh, who've been listening in so far. And uh, I, I hope that the, the second session will bring some vibrant uh, uh, and interesting exchanges as we pursue this, this, this conversation. Thank you all very much and see you all in a moment.